Alright, hello everyone. Welcome to the next part in setting up Android for development. Um, this time I'm going to walk you through the process of how to create an uh, Android virtual device. Um, otherwise known as an emulator. If you don't have an actual Android device then you'll need to be using an emulator for all your Android development. Um, note, emulators pretty much are emulating a phone, so a real life phone, a real life operating system. So these things tend to be slow. Um, and something to note about the Android um, emulator is that um, the very first time you load it up, it is extremely, extremely slow. Um, literally the first thing um, I did after I installed the clips was create a virtual device and once I got everything up and going and I started it, it took about 10 to 15 minutes before it fully loaded. So I realized that's a really long time, um, but if you follow these steps after the very first time, it should go a lot faster. So uh, what I want you to do for creating a virtual device is open up Eclipse and then click on Window. Next, click on Android Virtual Device Manager. And here is the place where you'll manage your virtual devices. As you can see, I've already created one. Um, however, let's create a new one. Um, so click on new and then you just have to give it a simple name whatever you want to call it um, next click on device and if you want to develop for a particular device it gives you several different options um, but let's go with the Galaxy Nexus that's one of the um, later um, or sorry that's one of the newer uh, Google devices um, it's equivalent with the Galaxy S3 by Samsung and other phones that are about a year, year and a half old. So go ahead and click on that one. Next it's going to ask you for CPU, ABI, and uh, go ahead and select ARM. And then as you noticed I select ARM down here and this message popped up down here. And I'm not sure if it happens on Mac and Linux users, but uh, note particularly for Windows it says emulating RAM greater than 768 megabytes may fail and so um, the very first time you go to run this, if you leave your RAM at 1024, you're more than likely going to get an error. So let me show you what that's like. Um, this happens on my um, brand new Series 7 Kronos uh, Samsung laptop with, you know, Xenobytes of memory and all that stuff. So even with a pretty top of the line computer, you're still going to get this error. Um, so let me show you. Uh, you're going to select the device you just created. I created Emo. And then I'm going to click Start. And this will begin to run the emulator. Um, and as you can see, we got this error right here. So as it warned, having um, RAM greater than 768 megabytes failed. So let's go in and edit that. Um, so all you need to do is select the emulator, click Edit. And then right here under memory options, let's crank that down to 768. Um, the error message mentions incrementally decreasing it until it succeeds. So I would start with 768, and if that doesn't work, go down to 512, etc. So let's try this one more time to start it um, and see if we're good to go. Um, actually, back up one more thing. What I want you to do is go back and edit it and something that's important is um, under these emulator options if you click snapshot um, that means after the very first time you go through the process of loading up the emulator it's going to save a snapshot of what you have therefore the next time you go to run the emulator it's going to boot up much faster so that's something we definitely want to enable so click on snapshot click OK now we select our emulator one more time and click start and as you can see now, it's going to say uh, launch from snapshot, saved snapshot for this very first time. We don't have a snapshot, so let's uncheck that. And now let's click launch. Mm -hmm. And as you can see here, I have this beautiful uh, emulator right here. Now comes the painful part. Um, the very first time you run this emulator, it's going to take anywhere between 3 to 15 minutes to load and you're gonna see this Android screen right here just flicker over and over and over again so you know the average person's gonna see that screen and assume you know something is hung up so what you can do um, 
while this is loading, we can use that ADB tool that I talked about to see what's actually happening behind the scene. So what I recommend is you go and open up a terminal, and if you have the ADB path, or sorry, ADB on your path, which I showed you how to do earlier, um, you can type in ADB logcat. And as I mentioned, ADB logcat is a way to view messages, debugging messages that the system prints out. So if you hit enter, you can see that slowly over time things are actually happening in the background. Um, Keychain.apa APK change. That's actually an application that is installed on a phone. Um, so don't freak out if your emulator has this window for 10 minutes. What I recommend you do is you know get out, go watch a television show. Um, maybe when you go to bed, start it up, and when you wake up, you'll have an emulator waiting for you. But expect a very long wait time. Um, I would think if it goes on longer than 20 minutes. And once you have ADB Logcat running and you don't see any messages popping up, that um, maybe then something's gone wrong and there's an error. Um, so rather than wait for this entire process, um, I want to show you guys what it actually looks like. So I'm going to close my current emulator and open up one that I've already had um, previously created. It's this one. And if I click Start, um, I already previously saved a snapshot for it because I loaded it, so click launch from snapshot and now we can see hopefully within you know seconds it was quickly able to load up the emulator. So that is how you create an Android virtual device for development. Um, once you're inside here you can see um, it's just like a regular phone. You can swipe left to right and the pages will change when you click on an application it actually launches that application so it's like having a real phone uh, on your computer. So that concludes this part of the video with creating an Android uh, device. Next we'll create a simple Hello World uh, program.